the idea of summer camp wasn't something my parents really understood. So the only camps I ever went to were like goat milking camp and then debate camp. That's it, no other camps. I remember like my friends got to go to camp at NASA and I was like, why can't I go to space camp? And my parents were like, here's goat milking camp. You asked to go to camp, right? <laughs> So we're making curry today, and curry is basically this like cozy, warm, tangy soup. Think of like the best like cream of whatever soup you've ever had, but with no produce and made of chickpea flour, spices, yogurt, turmeric. And the thing that always bugs me is that people, it's spelled K-A-D-H-I, and so a lot of people think that's like curry, and they think, oh, like an Indian curry. This is not that, this is curry. So the base of curry is turmeric, chickpea flour, yogurt, and water. And this part is really important because everything has to be really smooth and homogenous. Otherwise, it's gonna not cook right. It'll get clumpy and kind of taste a little gross when you're cooking it. So we're gonna start by putting our yogurt. And you wanna try and find the most sour yogurt you can get. Weirdly, the European style yogurt at Trader Joe's works really well, but what works the best is just like having yogurt that's old. Like a two week old tub of yogurt will work really well. You really want that like characteristically sour, acidic flavor. Like I've just found that Indian brands of yogurt in particular just have a much more acidic flavor. And that's what I grew up with. I love that flavor. We've got our chickpea flour. I feel like chickpea flour kind of turned into a wellness trend recently. And people are like, oh my God, have you heard of chickpea flour? And every Indian ever was like, yes, we use it all the time. <laughs> and then we're gonna put water in here and we're gonna give it a whisk again. I like doing this all in a measuring cup because when we have to pour it in, it just makes it easier, but you can do this in whatever floats your boat. Now we're gonna add our turmeric. Curdy has this like really beautiful bright yellow color and the turmeric is what gives it that. Mix this until you aren't seeing any lumps. Like Lumps are the enemy in curry. You want this to be really smooth, really homogenous, really creamy. All right, so this is, this is kind of what you're looking at. See, like, look, no, no bumps, no lumps, nice and smooth. Cool? This is a soup that's really gonna bubble. So if you're choosing between something a little smaller and something a little bigger, go with something a little bit bigger because you don't want things spilling over. So we're gonna heat this up on medium. And then we're gonna put our ghee in. You can use oil if you want, like any neutral oil, but ghee is really the best. Okay, so while this melts, we've got cloves, black mustard seeds, love these, two bay leaves, fenugreek. It sort of has this really like earthy, woodsy aroma. It works really well with like sweet dishes like squash. Um, it's very essential in Indian cooking. <laughs> and then black peppercorns. So the reason we're starting with whole spices is because it's awesome to get the sort of bite into like a whole peppercorn that's gotten a little bit soft but retains a little bit of crunch. Like even the cumin seeds, you get this like sort of smoky hit in the middle of the soup. So we're gonna let these toast. Toasting them kind of brings out the aroma, gives them a little bit of crunch. The best indicator that they're done is when the mustard seeds start popping. So it'll probably be about a minute or two and then this will be good to go. These are popping, so we're gonna add curry mixture and we're gonna add this. And we're gonna add salt. And now we have to keep stirring until it boils, because if you don't keep stirring, it will curdle. This is the kind of stressful part about making curdy. Do not stop stirring. Like curdling is the difference between like kind of a chalky tasting soup and a really rich, creamy tasting soup. So we're gonna turn the heat up to high and again, keep stirring. This is a good point to taste it, just to make sure that the salt levels are what you want and also that it's tangy enough. And if it's not tangy enough, my trick is just a few drops of lime juice. Let's see how it goes. Mm. I think it needs a little more uh, acidity. So I'm gonna put a few drops of lime juice. Just I think the yogurt wasn't old and wasn't old enough. I'm adding a teeny bit of lime juice just to give it a little bit more tang, but continuing to stir. 
and then I'm adding just a teeny bit of more salt as well. The other thing I love about this curry is that it requires no fresh produce. It's one of those perfect winter soups, like when you go to the farmer's market and there's literally nothing that's looking good, you can come home and make curry and rice and it's just kind of this perfect self-contained meal. My mom puts pakoras, which are these little fritters made of chickpea flour in her curry, but I don't like pakoras in my curry. And whenever I bring this up with someone else from Uttar Pradesh or from UP, they're like, this is blasphemous. <laughs> but I just don't like stuff floating around in my soup. It's just, I don't know, it's just a personal preference. But if you like pakoras in your curry, you can buy them frozen at the Indian store and plop them in, totally fine. Okay, so now that it's boiling, what I'm gonna do, this is another mom trick, is I'm gonna like keep this spoon in here, a long handled spoon to kind of break the surface tension and prevent it from boiling over and let it cook for about 10 minutes. So this is, you can see how it's thickened up. It's like thick enough to kind of coat a spoon. It's almost there. We're gonna give it like one or two minutes. Gonna give it a little taste. Guys, it's really good. It's really good. Mm. I'm going to turn that off. And now we are, ooh, oops, that's what aprons are for. We're going to make the chonk. We put chonk on everything. Haven't you watched enough of these videos to know that? <laughs> so put our key in. As soon as this is all melted, we're going to add our cumin seeds. You'll note we're adding, we added cumin seeds to the, I guess the, there's a soup itself and we're going to put it on the chonk because in this they have sort of an earthy taste and in this they have almost this like sort of smoky buttery taste. And I think one of the things that's so amazing about Indian cooking is just sort of like layering the complexity of the spices. This dish is really like a study in nuance and complexity. It's just, I'm really excited to eat it. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put our cumin seeds in here. You all know the drill. We're gonna wait for them to dance a little in the oil. Once you can smell that smoky flavor, they start to get a little brown. All right, these are good to go. They're nice and brown, so you take it off the flame. Now we're gonna add our asfetida hing. Kind of has this beautiful like garlicky oniony flavor that we know and love. We're gonna do our dried chilies and then our red chili powder. Cayenne works great. I use Kashmiri chili powder because it has a nice smoky taste. And this is what? Our chonk looks like. Pretty nice. Ooh, chonk. <laughs> Sorry. All right, now we're ready to put it in the bowl. We're gonna drizzle our chonk over the top. Okay. And then the last touch. All right, here we go. <laughs> kind of awesome. Really always my favorite part. And so to construct a bite, you are gonna mound white rice. You're gonna put a little bit of curry over the top and it's kind of perfect. So everyone has a preferred curry to rice ratio. I like a good amount of rice, I'm not gonna lie. And then I'm gonna give this just a little stir, get everything incorporated. The chilies, just note, are for like color and aroma. I, I would not eat them, but some people eat them. It's personal preference, I just like don't, might blow your head off. I'm gonna eat it. Mmm. Oh my god. This is like the coziest, most soul warming soup ever. Just with the rice, it's just, it's like this is what I want on a sick day, on a cold day. It's like tangy, you got the crunch of the spices, it's rich from the chonk. It's a little spicy, but not too spicy. Who would have thought? Put yogurt in soup. Indians, that's who. <clears throat> mm. Also, whole peppercorns, so underrated. Like, crunching on a whole peppercorn, I find extremely satisfying. It's like every bite's a little bit different. Sometimes you get like the smoky crunch of a cumin seed. Sometimes you get that sort of more earthy, bitter crunch of the fenugreek. Mm. Oh my God. This is so good. I wish my mom were here. All right. Our curry is boiling away. We've got like five minutes. I can read the thing in, in debate in debate talk if you want. On the mark, Priya present the case now. 
Cardi, meet my favorite soup of all time. Cardi is similar in texture to those cream of soups. Far more satisfying than no creaming involved dishes. Its original form comes from Roger Song, where my mom tells me it's popular because it's lack of robust agriculture. And the reason all you need to make curry are yogurt, chippy flour, and spices. Don't let simplicity, simplicity fool you. Curry is deeply comforting, insanely complex flavor, like a cozy blanket of hot, 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 wild rice, of white rice. At my mom's recipe, unlike the liquidy mild version, made in certain restaurants, it's thick, spit, right, rich, and spice forward. It's a pleasant, tangy, and a small warning. Absolutely love the strong pepper and cave with flavor. And the just if you don't like peppercorns, feel free to nix them or cut the amount in half. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're being really good Ooh. at the end of